Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Our Savior's Lutheran Church on this Good Shepherd Sunday. My name is Pastor Ben. It is a blessing and an honor to be gathered here to worship. Uh, Pastor Brian is with us this morning. He'll uh, be up on a little bit when it comes time for the sermon. Pastor Elizabeth is down the street with our good friends there at our celebration campus. Good Shepherd Sunday is a, a beautiful tradition in the church. It's when we hear talk, Jesus talk about him being the good shepherd. We'll also uh, read Psalm 23. Uh, talks about uh, being shepherded by God. It's a, a wonderful day. Uh, here at Our Saviors, often Good Shepherd Sunday has been a tradition where we hear uh, from our friends at Lutheran Social Services of Illinois. Uh, they are going to come back in a couple of weeks. They weren't free this Sunday this time. So uh, we'll forgive at just this once. Uh, we're going to have a more regular, wonderful Good Shepherd Sunday, and they'll be with us on Pentecost. Is that right? On Pentecost, so another wonderful day of the church. We are uh, gathered here, and we have some exciting things coming up uh, for this community. Uh, the first is, um, actually both of them are on Saturday, April 27th, so just uh, about a week away, we have our Women's Ministry Annual Spring Tea. Uh, if you are the kind of person who would love to have a, a nice formal tea time together with some good friends, that is from 11 to 1 this coming Saturday, uh, right in our Fellowship Center here at this campus. Uh, you can check out the website for tickets. Guests are always welcome. Also, on Saturday, April 27th, if you uh, want to come a little bit later in the day, we are uh, having our annual Slovakia ministry dinner. If you want to try some, uh, I think, they have Slovakian food at this dinner? Yeah, Slovakian food, fantastic. So, I've not done it before. I'm going to have to try some Slovakian food. I, I hear it's good. Um, but that will be at our celebration campus uh, starting at 6 p.m., a wonderful way to uh, raise some money for our Slovakia ministry, a wonderful uh, connection and international connection that this community has and has had for a number of years, um, supporting uh, some fantastic education opportunities in the country of Slovakia. Today, just so you know, it's the last day you can get tickets. So if you want tickets, you know, scan that code you know, during the sermon or sometime, you can go ahead and buy them, you'll be good, you know. <laughs> or after the service, your choice. Those are all the announcements I have for us right now, but please do uh, keep an eye on the website, on your email, on that news and events page. There are always more things showing up, always more things we are doing together in Jesus' name. At this time, I'd like to invite you uh, to rise as you are able, as we begin our worship. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. To the Lord. For the peace from above 
and for our salvation. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia. Let us pray. O Lord Christ, good shepherd of the sheep, you seek the lost and guide us into your fold. Feed us and we shall be satisfied. Heal us and we shall be whole. Make us one with you. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated as we hear the reading of God's Word. The first reading from Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. The word of God. Thanks be to God. At this time, I'd like to invite uh, the Block family, our baptism family, to come forward as we continue with the sacrament of baptism. As we gather here for baptism, we remember how God's love and salvation in Jesus comes to us. 
we do something very special in these moments. We give thanks for the sacrament and we remember how God's big promises show up right here in our world. Right here at this font, God's sacred time comes in to play with our human time. Baptism claims us by name on a very specific day in history and entangles all of us, every witness, into the good news of God's never-ending yes. God uses water to connect these sacred words to our senses, to our touch and our feel. This is a symbol we already know about, from its creative power to help and nourish and cleanse. In baptism, we are claimed by the God of living water with a precious and limitless supply that gives and sustains life. And so Allison and Aaron, I ask you, called by the Holy Spirit and trusting in the grace and love of God, do you desire to have Esther baptized into Christ? If so, answer, we do. Now, as you bring Esther to receive the gift of baptism, you're entrusted with these responsibilities. To live with her among God's faithful people, to bring her to the word of God and the Holy Supper, to teach her the Lord's Prayer, the Creed, and the Ten Commandments, to place in her hands the Holy Scriptures, we have a little first Bible to help you with that a little bit later. To nurture her in faith and prayer so that she may learn to trust God, proclaim Christ through word and deed, care for others and the world God made, and work for justice and peace. And so do you promise to help Esther grow in the Christian faith in life? If so, answer, we do. Now that's a big promise. There's a lot of parts there. And so we want to bring some help along. And so I'll ask your sponsors now. Do you promise to help Esther grow in the Christian faith in life? If so, answer, we do. Now that's pretty good, but we have more people here. And so, people of God, I have questions for you as well. And I'll invite you to stand as we say these things. You see, we baptize in public worship so that we can make promises to Esther today and speak these promises uniquely for her. We mark this moment in our human experience and we are gathered here as one congregation. And yet, we make these promises not just on behalf of us, but on behalf of the whole Christian church across time and space. And so, people of God, I ask you, do you promise to speak the truth about Esther's identity as a child of God, affirming Esther through all circumstances with her first and forever name, Beloved. If so, answer, we do. People of God, do you promise to care for Esther Ruth and pray for her in her new life in Christ? If so, answer, we do. People of God, do you promise to hold healthy and safe space for Esther, to grow in faith believing that there is nothing that she can do that will make God love her any more or any less than she's already loved in Christ? If so, Please answer, we do. do. Amen. You may be seated, congregation. So we have lots of help. Now, we have water today for our baptism, and there's nothing particularly special about this water. It comes from the faucet, just like any other water. But this ordinary water becomes something extraordinary because we know God can do amazing things with water. Now, there are lots of stories in the Bible. There's some water on the floor now, too. There's lots of stories in the Bible about water, making things new, saving people, and sustaining life. And we know that when God makes promises with water, amazing things can happen. And we trust that God is about to do something amazing right here and right now. And so I'll ask you to bring Esther right over here. Whatever she is comfortable with is good with me. Yeah, hi, Esther Ruth. I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You can hold her back up and just get that on. <laughs> and 
I have a special blessing for Esther, so if you just come right here, I'll put my hand up. So let us pray. We give you thanks, O oh God, that through water and the Holy Spirit you give your children new birth, cleanse them from sin, and raise them to eternal life. Sustain Esther with the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence, now and forever. Amen. And now we have some oil. Oh yeah, I moved it down here, didn't I? So this oil, uh, it's olive oil, comes from a nice little vial, but it makes the sign of the cross on your forehead. And this is a sign that even though it washes away, never really goes away. It is a symbol that Christ has named you and claimed you, Esther. And from this moment on, you are a child of God. And so Esther Ruth, a child of God, you've been sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. Amen. And we also have a candle to give to you. This we light off of our, our Paschal candle or our Christ candle, and it symbolizes the light of Jesus in the world. And we give this to you, and we say the same words that Jesus said a long time ago on a mountain. Jesus said, let your light shine before others that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. And this is a candle that you can light on the anniversary of baptisms, and each year uh, Esther can learn a little bit more about what happened on this day. And so we have um, one more prayer, and then we will send you out and uh, introduce you to this congregation. So let us pray. We pray, O oh God, giver of life, look with kindness this day on Esther, her family, and sponsors. Let them rejoice in the gift that you have given them and Esther Ruth. Guide them all as teachers and examples of faithfulness, and strengthen them in their own baptismal promises. O oh Lord, use the members of this congregation and the whole body of Christ to support them through prayer, love, and hospitality, so that they may continue to grow in love toward you and to all of creation. Amen. It is now my honor to present the newest baptized child of Christ, Esther Ruth. Hi, baby. So this is Esther Ruth. She is our newest member of Our Savior's Lutheran Church. And Esther, these people are all here for you. They are here to teach you about God and about the world. And as you get older, you can come to Sunday school and do preschool and play games and sing songs. Yes, you can. And when you get older than that, you can come to our regular Sunday school, and then you can come to confirmation classes, and you can learn all about God and all the things that happen. And when you get even older than that, you can come right back here and you can get married. We'll do that too. We are here for you your whole life long. That's right, your whole life long. And all of these people have just promised to love you and pray for you no matter what happens, no matter where you go, no matter what you do. You are always and forever a baptized child of God. And I think that's pretty good, huh? All right. You guys may be seated. We'll continue with that worship. I mean, I wouldn't mind doing the whole service, but just simply. gospel according to John. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand, who is not the shepherd, does not own the sheep, sees a wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away, and the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because the hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own, and my own know me. Just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father, and I lay down my life for my sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason, the Father loves me because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. 
No one takes it from me, but I lay it down on my own accord. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it up again. And I receive this command from my Father. This is the gospel of our Lord. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. I begin today by sharing words of grace and peace to you from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. I get 40 days of Easter, so I get to still proclaim the Easter message uh, that way. Um, we're going to be talking about uh, this in a moment uh, before we share in our offering that this month is National Volunteer Month, uh, but I kind of... I always wonder what is it the national day of. I don't know if you ever get reports on social media. Uh, today is the national day of fill in the blank. So I thought I'd share a little bit with you about how important the month of April is. April 1st, you all know that as April Fool's Day. But I don't know if you know this, but it's also National Sour Bread Day. And you might want to celebrate that next year or not if you're gluten free. Um, April 15th, we know and recognize that as Tax Day, um, but it's also National Glazed Spiral Ham Day, which is, could be really important to your family. I forgot to celebrate that this year. April 18th, I think, should be a national holiday. It's Conan O'Brien's uh, birthday, and I, I find him to be the funniest comedian ever. Uh, the 19th was National Garlic Bread Day and also National High Five Day. Uh, the 20th yesterday was National Lima Bean Respect Day. <laughs> like, who has the authority to declare that you have to respect lima beans? Because uh, I certainly didn't. And you might be wondering, what are you doing with all your free time now that you're not working on your schoolwork and that my doctoral work is done? Now you know I'm filling my days with uh, figuring out what national day it is for, for this sermon. Uh, coming up this next week, the, the 25th is National Hug a Plumber Day. Uh, the 27th is National Hairball Awareness Day. And of course, no one should skip April 29th, which is National Shrimp Scampi Day. Why? Uh, but these things exist. So it makes you wonder then what is today, the 21st of April. It, it, do we have anyone named Alex in the room? No Alexes. Well, today is National Alex Day, so call an Alex. But here in the church, as Pastor Ben shared, it is known as Good Shepherd Sunday. And so uh, the fourth weekend after Easter, we as the church always celebrate Good Shepherd Sunday. The readings that are set for the church uh, reflect on Jesus being the Good Shepherd. You, you hear him say, I am the Good Shepherd. It's about God being a shepherd as we share in the 23rd Psalm. And, and so rather than just having it be some meaningless day on our calendars, like National Shrimp Scampi Day, and I say that with all respect for shrimp scampi lovers. Today matters. Having or understanding Good Shepherd Sunday, it, it, it matters because we are declaring that God and Christ are our Good Shepherd. And we share this good news that, that all people are a part of this flock. And it matters. Today is Good Shepherd Sunday, and this is good news for all people. So just to touch on the 23rd Psalm and the Gospel of John and, and why these are important for Good Shepherd Sunday. The 23rd Psalm is one of the most famous passages from the Bible. A lot of us heard this when we were little kids and uh, maybe made to, to memorize it. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. The first thing that we can learn from this is who God is and who we are. The Lord is my shepherd. That God is this giver and this protector and that we are the flock. We are cared for, named and claimed and covered by God. I've learned about sheep over the years because I once preached a sermon on sheep with uh, someone who was a sheep farmer and corrected nearly everything that I said afterwards. 
So I've learned to be very careful. But the thing that, that is worthwhile sharing about sheep is they're not primarily raised for food. Meaning, uh, when, when you're raising animals for food, the goal is to get them as plump and ready for market as quickly as possible. And, and a majority of sheep are actually not raised to be on your plate. Rather, they are raised for the long haul. Sheep are raised to provide wool season after season. And so a shepherd's goal isn't about immediate gratification as quickly as possible, but it's about a long-term commitment with a sheep. And who are the sheep again? Us. The Lord is my shepherd has always been fine with me, but that phrase, I shall not be in want, has always poked my interest. To be an American in 2024, not being in want sometimes feels like wanting the newest iPhone or Bluetooth headphones or a faster or newer car or a bigger house or a better career or making sure that my family looks perfect. And not being in want... I think for all of us sounds really appealing. But in the context of sheep that we just learned about, to not be in want might not be about that instant gratification, but realizing just how cared for and loved are you are in your entire life. I saw a line this week that uh, how lucky we are to be able to take a warm shower. I'm not going to out you, but a majority of us took a warm shower this morning or within the last 24 hours, I hope. And a and hundred years ago, that was a rarity. A hundred years ago, it was a rarity for anyone really to have a warm shower. Out of the billions of people who have ever lived in this earth, how lucky are we to be afforded all the things that we have in our life. So rather than instant gratification and that, that is totally amplified by the commercialization of our world, following God as our good shepherd might mean trusting that we have so much more than sometimes our minds, our hearts are yearning for. In realizing just how blessed we are as a people. Every single weekend here in church we say these words, Give us this day our daily bread. I shall not be in want. These are words that remind us that I am enough and that I have enough. And that God does provide and always has provided all of us with, with so much. We are so blessed as a people. And God the Good Shepherd is with us for the long haul. Not just quick fixes or quick answered prayers, but throughout every day of our life, even when things feel a little rough. In our gospel text, the Bible verse just before our text for today in John's gospel, Jesus says this, I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. He then goes on to say, I am the good shepherd, and the good shepherd lays down his life for his sheep. So we know the story of Jesus, the story of Holy Week and Easter that we share. So we know that our Good Shepherd does not just make a promise, rather, rather he lives by it, literally laying down his life. This shepherd, Jesus, lays down his life and puts his life where his promise is. And while some people will tell you different forms of theology, um, I don't know if you've ever heard this uh, some will teach you that uh, because of your sin, because of the ways that you have failed, Jesus had to pay that price in order for you then to be saved. Have you all heard that before? I want to share with you what John's gospel actually says, and it says it right here in this text. In John's gospel, it doesn't say that Jesus died in order to make some kind of payment to God, in order to satisfy God for your sins. Rather, it says this. 
Jesus comes to make a very distant God, an invisible God, visible and real and present and accessible to all. Jesus is the good shepherd who walks with us, loves us, and says, these sheep I love so much, I'm willing to do anything for them. So we might see how far God would go for all of us. Not because you did something horrible, but because that's the shepherd and the relationship that the shepherd has with their sheep. That this good shepherd knows you, loves you, And this is a long-term relationship kind of stuff that I'm going to be with you through all things. I will lay down my life for you kind of promise. And then Jesus comes to reveal God's love for the world in that way through his life, love, death, and resurrection. No exceptions. This is the love that the good shepherd shares with us. Jesus comes to tell us that we are already loved like that. That we are already enough. That it's not about instant gratification or the newest technology or the coolest shoes or likes on Instagram or about how much money is in your bank account that would make God love you. And we have to go to the next level. That it's not that you went to church today and all of a sudden God loves you a little bit more or that you had a perfect attendance rate in Sunday school or that you gave more than 10% to the church and all of a sudden that helped you to earn God's love. The Bible doesn't say that. Rather, you are already enough. You are already so loved by this God. You are already the way that God has made you and created you to be and called you to be. And God has felt this way since it left the psalmist's lips. And God calls us, the church, to continue sharing this good news, not just on Good Shepherd Sunday, but every day. There are many sheep, Jesus says, who are not in this flock. I know my own and they know me hear my voice, and they will listen, Jesus says. And we celebrate because God loves them. Dear people of God, you are so loved by God who who claims you like a shepherd claims his sheep. And if you can give me permission just for a moment, I'm going to talk to baby Esther here, but I'm talking to all of you, if that's all right. So, baby Esther... Today we made a lot of promises up here. Your parents, your godparents, the church. We celebrated that you are a named and claimed child of God and and we all love you. You will always be welcomed here and we the church and your family cannot wait to see all the amazing things that God will do through you. What I think is most important for you to hear today, and I pray that anytime you come to church you're going to hear this, is that God's promise is to protect you, that God's promise is love, and that God's promise says you have always been worthy to be a part of this flock and will be with you through all moments in life. And that good news for you is good news for all of us. Church, today is Good Shepherd Sunday. Not just another national calendar day, But this is a special day where we celebrate God and Jesus as this shepherding figure in our life who loves us and calls us our own and promises to protect us this day and always. May all God's people say, Amen. At this time, I'd like to invite you to stand as we continue now with song.
join me in professing our faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended to heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to us, judging the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Rejoicing that Jesus is risen and love has triumphed over fear, let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need of good news. Shepherding God, gather your church whenever we wander from you and one another. Empower our church in ministries around the world to worship and serve alongside global companions as equal partners and co-workers in the gospel. God of grace, yeah. nurturing God, preserve the health of ecosystems, inspire scientists, researchers, conservation organizations, and all people entrusted with the task of caring for creation so that we may be better stewards of the world around us. God of grace, yeah. almighty God, Lead nations and communities to share resources, cooperate in solving conflicts, and listen to the wisdom of indigenous peoples. Help all those with power to share it and use such power for good. God of grace. Yeah. Loving God, protect the very young and the very old, those who are unhoused, victims of domestic abuse, all who live with chronic illness or compromised immune systems. Guide communities to actively care for people who are vulnerable. God of grace, yeah. gracious God, thank you for all those in our congregation and community who offer their time and talents in service to you. Joining in our ministry of bringing healing hope and compassion to all those in need. God of grace, yeah. healing God, you invite us to love more deeply and serve those who are lonely, isolated, and on the margins. We pray especially for all in need of healing. In our prayers this week, Bill Caldwell and John Holland, we comfort the grieving. We pray for Quinn Olson and family as they mourn the death of Quinn's mother, Belle May Olson. We rejoice at the baptism of Esther Ruth Block, Russell, Derek Russell Bryan, and Trey Nicholas Bryan. God of grace, yeah. living God, we give thanks for our ancestors in faith. Strengthen us to share the good news in our own day. God of grace, into your hands, most merciful God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your abiding love through Jesus Christ, our resurrected and living Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you all. Please share a sign of Christ's peace with one another. And you may be seated. 
So I'm going to break things up a little bit, and it's going to be okay because it's, it's National Day of Making My Church Feel Awkward today. Um, I, as I mentioned earlier, uh, April is a, a month where we celebrate and say thank you to volunteers. And so there are many people throughout the year, throughout every single day or week, um, serve the church in many different ways. And so uh, one way to say thank you is to invite you to join us this Tuesday here uh, at the Our Saviors campus between 9.30 and 11. The Our Saviors staff uh, wants to treat you to coffee and some treats. And so if you are available, please join us. It's a great way to connect with one another. But um, you might be wondering, like, what are we going to talk about? Are they going to ask me to do more things? No, we, we, want, we truly just want to say thank you. Uh, but there is a way to get to know the people that are around you. And so uh, we're going to bring this concept here, and it might be the first time we've ever done it in this space. So I'm going to introduce to you uh, what's called the two-minute mingle. And, and so for two minutes, we're going to be talking to one another, and you can go and meet somebody new for the first time, or you can be with somebody that you've known your entire life. But I'm going to go over some of the rules to the two-minute mingle. The first rule is I'm not going to be upset if someone doesn't know my name, okay? So it's great to just reintroduce yourself to the person you're speaking with. Uh, the second is, um, again, you might want to go and speak to somebody that you, you do know or don't know. This might put a twist in your stomach and make you never want to come back to church ever again, and we don't want to do that. So if that's you, maybe go get a cup of coffee or make sure that your car is locked and come back. By, <laughs> but, but we want to encourage you to meet with somebody. The third rule is don't ask yes or no questions. And so we've provided you with some questions up here about volunteering, like how do you like to serve your community? That doesn't have to be here if you're newer to our space. Or uh, what brings you joy in volunteering? For two minutes, we're going to get to know somebody. So I want you all to stand up. And for two minutes, and I'll bring you back together, get to know your community, and let's connect with one another. And so begin. Hey, Jay. Ten seconds, ten seconds. The Lord be with you. The Lord be with you. Thank you. Okay, friends. The danger, the danger of a two minute mingle. You may be seated. I know. I know that it can be difficult at times to meet someone new. Uh, I pray that it was fruitful to connect with one another. 
I believe that worship is not a spectator sport where one speaks and everyone listens. We are in community together. And so thank you for uh, your willingness to participate. I pray that it's been a way for you to connect to one another. I pray that you say yes to serving with one another. And if you want to continue this, uh, continue over coffee and hospitality. Uh, between sharing of the peace and this, this prepares our hearts to come together to be of one community together as we receive this gift, as we share the gifts of our offering. And so thank you for participating today. I hope it was fruitful for you as well. At this time, we're going to continue by saying thank you to God by sharing in the gift of our offering. Amen. Please rise as you are able. Let us pray. Risen one, you call us to believe and bear fruit. May the gifts that we offer here be signs of your abiding love. Form us to be your witnesses in the world. We pray through Jesus Christ, our true vine. Amen. The Lord be with you. your hearts. Let us 
give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior Jesus Christ, the true Paschal Lamb, who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death and in rising brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. indeed holy, almighty and merciful God. You are most holy and great is the majesty of your glory. You so love the world that you gave your only son so that everyone who believes in him may not perish but have eternal life. And so we give you thanks for our Lord Jesus' is coming into the world to fulfill for us your holy will and accomplish all things for our salvation. And so we remember that in the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant, the new promise in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering all these things and trusting in this great promise, we pray the prayer that our Lord Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us in the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory of God, now and forever. Amen. These are the gifts of God for the people of God, and all is now ready. You may be seated. As we share communion today, we will do so by intinction, which means you'll take a bit of the bread and dip it into the cup. Um, at each of our stations, we actually have a, a chalice with two little compartments inside. The smaller side is white and has grape juice. The larger side will be red and has wine. Uh, you'll simply take uh, a wafer and you may dip it into either side of the cup. At the very center, we have a gluten-free station, which has gluten-free grape juice and gluten-free wafers. We ask that those uh, stay contained and you not bring anything else into that station so that we can make sure it is safe for those who need gluten-free. All are welcome. Let us share in this feast.
I'd like to invite you to stand as you are able. And let's pray. We give you thanks, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through the healing power of this gift of life. And your mercy strengthen us through this gift in faith toward you and in fervent love for one another. We pray this for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Hallelujah. Go in peace. Rejoice and be glad. <laughs>